All right. Now we're actually going to see why we went through all this work to uh, create this CAM file this way. So just very quickly, a couple of the things that we want to make clear. Because we built this file the way that we did, it's, it's very modular. So if we would want to change out the uh, vice, for instance, like go with a different vice, it won't blow up the entire file. All we have to do is just reassemble things. Reassemble our machine component into the new vice, uh, like that second op vice, the cavity we machined. Uh, it, it wouldn't really be that difficult if we wanted to use a different type of vice. We would just swap out that vice and all the geometry, everything we used to uh, create that cavity would still be there and we could very easily sink it into the uh, different vice. And that's really kind of the, the point here of what we're trying to do. Uh, we're, we're trying to build the cam assembly in sort of like a, a modular, flexible way that uh, makes it very easy to work with and you know, lets the door open for changes going forward. That's one of the advantages. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to see how the stock dynamically transfers from one setup to the other. So what I'm going to do is very quickly uh, do a machining setup and do some machining. I'm not going to try to uh, show you how to create the, the setups or anything. That might be in a different video. I just very quickly want to do the setup, do some simple machining, and show how the stock transfers. So let's do that uh, here very quickly. So what I'm going to do is go into manufacture mode. I'm going to do a new setup. And the first thing I always like to do is deal with the stock. So I'm going to do stock from the solid. And I'm going to pick that body that we model up. It's going to be our stock. Over here, we're going to do milling setup, orientation, model orientation, all this stuff I'm not going to mess with. The model, this part is very important. I have to pick the connecting rod component. The whole entire component, not the solid body, has to be the entire component because it needs the component and its coordinate system. Uh, the fixture, you know, I could pick whatever I want to represent the fixture. I'm just going to pick the vice jaws, the parallels. Um, depending on how you're doing this, you may want to show the whole vice. That's up to you. But that should be good enough. That should be everything I need do the setup. And now we'll do uh, some simple machining. I'm going to go over here to 3D machining. I'm going to do an adaptive clearing. I'm going to go pick a tool. And what I have to do is find a tool. So I'm going to just look in all my libraries, some kind of milling tool, a flat end mill, diameter equal to 0.95. Let's see what we get. Like that looks good. Great. So we have a tool. We're going to let it take its defaults and going to machine just a little bit lower than the bottom of my model. And the one thing I am going to do, normally this is a roughing operation, I'll leave stock, but because I'm kind of doing a little demo, I'm not going to leave any stock. I'm going to say OK, and Fusion 360 will very quickly calculate some pretty cool roughing strategies. So that's what it did. It took all that stock down and roughed that part out for me, which is, which is pretty awesome, really, when you think about all that it had to do to calculate that. So now what we want to do is we want to set up our second operation uh, set up and we want to we want the stock to cascade so whatever the condition of the stock was in the first operation we want it to reflect in the second operation that we're about to create so in order to do that we need to go back to design mode and we have to uh, duplicate we have to copy that original connecting rod component and assemble it into position in the second fixture so what i like to do to make this easy is i my screen capture software gets in the way of my buttons. I'm going to turn on something called Component Color Swatch. You want to turn that on. Um, without it, you don't see these little colors, but when you activate it, you get a color swatch next to each of your components. 
and they help you identify which components are unique, which components are copies of one another. What I'm going to do is copy this connecting rod component that was the machine component in my first setup. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to say copy, and then I'm going to click on the root level. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say paste. So you have two options here, you have paste and paste new. If I click paste, I'm going to get a true copy of the original component. Color swatches will be the same. If I say paste new, I'm going to get a copy of that component, but it's going to be it, it, unlinked. It's going to be a sort of a standalone copy. Color swatches will be different. So we want to make sure we click paste. And just for visual purposes, I'm going to just drag this copied component up here just so I can see, you know, the, the difference between the two. And perfect. We had the exact same color swatch. So whatever I do to this original component would get reflected into this copy. So if I add more bodies to it, modify the bodies, trim them, make sketches, whatever I do here will get carried over into this one over here. So now I have to get this new component in position in my second op vise. Now what's convenient is I used a I used that component, not not that exact component, but the same component to cut the cavity in this jaw. And I have that component in position. So literally all I have to do is match this component up to that component and I'm set. Uh, so this has to go 180 degrees to get into there. So really, if you can imagine it, it's going to be, you know, this face here matches up with that face there. So let's let's do some assembling. So let's just take assemble joint, a rigid joint, and we'll just go that outside edge. Has to assemble to this outside edge. And we just need to manipulate it a little bit to get it to line up. Uh, let's flip it and then let's put the angle back to zero. Now it's in the perfect position. And all I'm going to do just to sort of simplify things, I'm going to go to that second op vise and I'm going to hide the connecting rod component that's part of the vise. And what I have left now is the uh, connecting rod component that I just copied. And you can see what happens when I when I click on it, it, it puts the little phantom line on the browser so I know I'm seeing the right thing. Now, what we need to do is go back into Manufacture and let's do a new setup. And same thing, I always like to take care of the stock first. It defaults to from preceding setup, so it's going to take the stock from the preceding setup and use it in this setup. Very important though, I got I have to continue rest machining. I want to check that box. And uh, it says when enabled, you can perform rest machining functions based on operations created in the previous setup. So we want to check that. Now the other things. Just like we did before, we have to do model orientation and all that stuff. But before we do that, we need to pick the model. It's very important that I pick the copied connecting rod component. That's that's very important. Everything else, um, model orientation, box point, whatever, we're, I'm not going to really worry about that right now. That, that's not the point of going through this. Fixture, all I'm going to pick is maybe my vice jaws. And I think that's it. I think we have enough information. Let's just say OK. And what do we get? Oh, look at that. It brought the machine stock from operation one over into operation two. And uh, I'll tell you, this in, in this piece of software in Fusion 360, this this is pretty easy to accomplish. Uh, other CAM packages, this can be a little bit more challenging to do, but this, this functionality works really well in this piece of software. So we should use it.
And like I said, this, this will work. You could have setup one into setup two into setup three into setup four, and the stock will keep updating. So let's just, let's just do something to, to demonstrate that it, it really does update. Uh, let's go back to our operation one, or our setup one, adaptive clearing operation. Let's edit it. And under the heights, let's, uh, let's change how deep we machine. So now we're not machining nearly as much stock away. And you'll see when I click on setup two, it's reflecting that. So you have this big chunk of stock. Uh, same thing if I go back to my first adaptive and edit that. Let's uh, bring the height down further. Say OK. When I click on setup two, you'll see that it, it matches. So this is this is really powerful, and um, this is this alone is a good reason to learn how to work with components in uh, Fusion 360 CAM. All right, I think uh, I think I'm going to stop there with the videos. Maybe uh, next set of videos we'll get more into the to the machining and the creation of toolpaths and those type of things. But this this is enough to kind of give you an idea of what I believe is the the correct way or the the productive way to use components versus bodies in Fusion 360 CAM and. Now that something that's worth maybe emphasizing is um, you can use each of these things as a container. So for instance, the connecting rod, this is our machined component. Right now it only has one body in it, but what probably will happen is you're doing your machining, you're gonna to need to create some sketches, maybe make a couple versions of the body, do all these different things. You don't have to keep creating component after component after component for all of that. Uh, you can just use this one, in this case, the connecting rod component as like a container and keep adding your bodies. So let, like, let's just do that. Let's, um, let's copy oh, here. Let's, let's activate the connecting rod. Let's, uh, copy and paste. Now we have two copies of the body. They will all live happily together. And you'll see your, your subsequent, your duplicated component carries that same change forward. Uh, so you don't have to have a, you know, three dozen different components and have to worry about assembling all of them. And you don't have to worry about, you know, your browser getting to be a mile long with all these, you know, crazy things on it. But what you can, what you'll find is really you may only need a handful of components, um, but you can do really powerful things with those components. So if you're willing to accept just a little bit more complexity than only working with bodies, um, you can get a lot more flexibility and functionality out of your CAM file. You can automate the stock transfer, and then you leave the door open to uh, this sort of like modular concept where if you want to move things around or change out vices or things like that, you don't have to start from ground zero or scratch. You uh, literally just kind of like plug and play, uh, you know, and think of it that way. Think of everything as like modular. So like, for instance, I would try to keep all the geometry that I need to machine this part. I would try to keep it nested under this connecting rod component. That way, no matter what vice I put it in, all of my geometry is there, comes along for the ride underneath the connecting rod component. If for some reason I started clicking on geometry from the vice to create my tool paths, you know, what would happen when I swap out this vice for a, a different vice, all those tool paths would, they would go dirty. They would need to be modified because some of their references would disappear. But if I made everything that drives those tool paths something that's contained underneath this connecting rod component, as long as that's there and it's intact, all my toolpaths and everything will come along. All right.
Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Have a great day.